Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at some of the enhancements, the recent enhancements in fact, to the Digital Publishing Suite or DPS for short, uh, tools for InDesign CS5 and CS55 users. And again, DPS is for creating digital content for your tablets, whether it be iOS or iPad, uh, Android or Blackberry Playbook. So, and, and Kindle Fire. So we have uh, another platform we just added. But anyway, in particular, what I want to show is uh, an enhancement to scrolling or sliding content that uh, in, you know, in the past it was difficult to create it in the first place, then we made it easier, but then it was still text and hyperlinks, and now we can include all, ki all kinds of media in the scrolling content. So let's take a look. I have InDesign CS55 open here, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new document. And in that new document, I've already got a preset that I made called iPad Tall and iPad Wide. And these are already set up for what I normally do for an iPad. But let's say you're starting from scratch. You would normally be on default. And you would switch your intent from print to web. And then you would switch to your screen resolution of the tablet device you're targeting. In my case, the iPad's 1024 by 768. And I want to make a tall orientation. Now at this point, if you want um, a number of pages for your article, go ahead and specify that. If you want columns to help you align things, go ahead and specify those. And if you need margins to help you keep things on the page in a certain look and feel, go ahead and use those. For mine, I definitely don't need margins, so I'll set those to zero. All right, so now I'm just going to create a one-page InDesign document in the tall orientation, and there it is. So next, what are we going to do? We're going to actually lay out a few frames on this uh, to help us build our scrolling content. Now, the first one is just for visual effect. I kind of don't want a blank page, and I don't really have any text or other things I want to put on the page just yet. So I'm going to use uh, Mini Bridge here. And in Mini Bridge, I'm going to go to my uh, Landscapes Portfolio folder, and I've got this uh, nice image of, uh, of the ocean on a Caribbean cruise. So we'll just go ahead and drag that in. I'll um, close Mini Bridge, and then we can go ahead and specify that this is pretty much going to fill up the whole uh, page. Now that I have that document there for the whole page, we're going to scroll over a little bit, grab the frame, because we don't want the frame bleeding off the page like that, and we'll just tighten it up and move this over. There we go. Kind of put the sun sunset or sunrise in the middle there. And now that we have that, we'll go to our effects panel. And in the effects panel, we're just going to drop the opacity way down. Because, again, this is kind of like just a ghosted background image. Oh, uh, maybe not quite that much. How about right around 25 or so? Maybe 30. Okay, so now that I've got my ghosted image in the background there, and we'll just go ahead and uh, we also want to lock this. So we'll just lock it in place so we don't disturb it. Now uh, we have our image in the background. Now it's time to build the frame for our scrolling content. So we're just going to grab the uh, rectangle tool. And I know I said frame, but trust me, rectangle tool in this case. And again, you can use a frame. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I just kind of don't want the big X in the middle, so I'm going to use the rectangle. Now I'm just arbitrarily dragging out a rectangle here. It's giving me my dimensions as I drag it. Uh, once I get it on the page, I can uh, then begin to specify... Uh, where it is on the page, getting a little nice screen refresh issue there, but I can get it on the page pretty much where I want it. And of course, I can use guides if I if I really want to center that and have it perfectly on the page. But we've got it there, and now the next thing we're going to do is that's going to be where the scrolling content is going to be. Now we actually want to bring in what's going to be the scrolling content. Now, you've seen me use MiniBridge, and MiniBridge is great. I would normally just grab all the images I want from here, but I am going to take you over to Bridge because there's something I want to point out. In Bridge, I have all the images I want to use. I'm just going to use a few of these, but the ones that I want to use, I just want to point out, when I select an image, I've gone ahead in the metadata, and I've put in a headline for each of those images. So... You go to this one, it's Coit Tower. I put the Coit Tower headline and description in, so forth and so on. So all of my images have a headline that I've gone ahead and put in ahead of time using Bridge or using Lightroom, you know, however you want to put your metadata in. So now I'm just going to grab like eight of these images. 
And again, grab as many as you want. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, they're in numerical order. Grab whatever you want that you want to place. So I've got my eight images. And now I'm just going to choose File, Place, in InDesign. And that should take me back over to InDesign with my cursor loaded with my eight images. Now I'm going to kind of just stretch this out. And it would normally, you know, place one image at this point. I'm just going to kind of pull it over. And keep in mind, I've got eight images loaded in the place gun. So I'm going to now tap my right arrow key on my keyboard. So right arrow, divide that into two frames. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are the frames for my eight images. And I'm kind of like making them landscape orientation a bit. So I'm stretching them out so that I think they'll kind of fit nicely in there. And, wow, that's the best I've ever done now. <laughs> okay, so they fit perfectly. If not, I would use a fitting command. Now, here's some other magic behind the scenes. While we have these eight images selected, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tell InDesign to take those headlines and use them as captions. So, once again, we'll uh, go up to the object menu in this case, and we'll come down to... We want to go to our captions. I always forget where this is because I never do it from the menu. There we go. Caption setup. And what I want to do is, of course, I want to use headlines. So I find it in the menu here. Uh, it'd be nice if these were in alphabetical order. Note to the team. All right, so we've got headline there, and that's what I want to use. And then where do I want it? I want it below the image, offset by one pixel. If I had created style sheets, I can say style those headlines uh, in a particular style, which I did not. And if I click OK, nothing happens because all we did was set it up. Now, the next thing we do is actually tell it to use it. Now, in most cases, I would tell you to use the generate live caption because then that means if you ever update the caption, it'll automatically update your InDesign document, so forth and so on. But in the, in the case of what we're going to do with this text and graphics and sliding and scrolling content, we actually want to generate a static caption that in this case doesn't change, and I'll show, I'll tell you why in a moment. But let's go ahead and do a static caption, and that will, if we zoom in a little bit there, you can see the captions underneath each image uh, coming from the metadata. So it did work, it did put the names in there nice and perfectly. And now, why live versus, or static versus live? because I'm now going to select all of that content and group it together. If I had done uh, live, then it would get confused. It would say, wait a minute, you've got all these things selected and you've got it now grouped. I don't know what you want the captions to be. So it's because of what I want to do next, I have to put it in a static. Now, before we go any further, before we do our next step, we're going to do one more thing. We are going to go ahead and grab uh, mini bridge. And in MiniBridge, I'm going to switch over to a different folder here where I've got some videos. Because keep in mind, InDesign works with videos. The iPad and all the tablets work with videos. DPS works with videos. And now your scrolling content can contain videos as well. So I've got this video. We'll just go ahead and drag it in. And once again, we'll close the uh, placement or we'll close the MiniBridge so we get our placement gun. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here and. Get it kind of where, oh, it's not going to let me scroll that. Uh, I will have to adjust this in a moment, coming out. But there's my video. And now, if I scroll this page over, or can I scroll my pasteboard over? Tell you what, let's do this first. Let's get it to be the right size. And you can do this mathematically, of course. I'm just going to eyeball it for the sake of demo. And now we'll just put that over there. All right, and next, of course, we want to refit that. So we will say that we want to uh, fill that frame proportionately. All right, so now our video is in there. Um, the rest of our content's there, although the video is kind of like all the way off the pasteboard. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and select everything. So now we're selecting everything, including our video, our captions, and our stills. Now we're going to group it together. So I would normally just hit Command G on the Mac or Control G on Windows, but we'll go ahead and group. And so now we have that all as one piece. So now we can uh, pick it up, we can move it around, we can put that where we want it to be. 
And uh, just to make sure my video did not do something weird, it did not, good. And now we're gonna go ahead and say that we want to cut it. That's right, edit, cut, or command X, but we're gonna cut it out of the InDesign document. Now we're gonna select our frame where we want this content to scroll, and we're just gonna do a paste into. Now that's the command we wanna use, not paste. We wanna use paste into so that it actually puts it inside of that frame. Now, it's inside the frame. I probably just centered it, but we wanna double click on it so that we can move it around where we want it to be. Okay, I want it to be right about there. And it's important that I actually want it to look cut off because that will signal the user that, hey, there's more stuff there that I can scroll. We don't have the ability to create scroll bar, or not scroll bars, but um, uh, buttons yet to scroll it, but the user will use their finger to do it. Now, the next thing I notice is that this frame is taller than it really needs to be. So I can go ahead and select the frame, and I can make that a little shorter. I go up there, and we got our frame. Now, I don't want to push it all the way up because I do want to leave some room for the scroll bar on the tablet itself. Okay, last but not least, with that frame still selected, we want to head over to our Overlay Creator. And in the Overlay Creator panel, we want to tell it that this particular frame is a pan and zoom. This is what makes it interactive on your tablet devices. All right, so now that we've done that, I want to test it. Now, before, I would go into the Folio Builder, sign in, upload this folio, go to my iPad, download the folio, test it. But we actually have the ability to preview this using the desktop um, preview tool or desktop content viewer. And we can preview this directly on your desktop without having to go through all the trouble of loading it onto a tablet just to see if it worked. So it's loading the uh, desktop content viewer here. And we're just going to go ahead and click. And we should be able to now scroll that. Sweet. And we should also be able to click to play the video. To run with the pretty people in the magazines. And the video is playing nicely. So there you have it. Scrolling slideshows, scrolling content. And you know what? Just let's make this a little easier. I'm going to quit out of this. There's no reason in the world that we should make you have to look at it down there. So let's move it up towards the top of the page. And let's preview this one more time. And that will build it and load the uh, content viewer for us. And there it is with our nice background graphic, our nice um, captions underneath, and of course, all the way at the end, which we could have put. With the pretty we could have put our own caption under there, but I just didn't take time to do it. So, But there you have it. You have all of your scrolling content, your text. You could put your own text in. You could put hyperlinks in. You could do whatever you want. And you give the user something interactive to look at uh, just by scrolling your fingers. And it only took a few steps in InDesign to get it the way we wanted it. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creator Suite podcast. Creating scrolling content now can be more than just text and hyperlinks. It can be a variety of different things or combinations of things. And we scroll left to right. It could just as easily be vertical as well. So there you have it. Hope that helps. And thanks again for watching the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. We'll catch you next time.